Hi, so this is a uh, an application I created um, called Weather Express. It's um, kind of a mixture between a blog and a weather app. And what I'm trying to configure here is um, a virtual environment. Uh, unfortunately, something is wrong with my virtual environment and I can't get it to activate. So I'll be going through this quick demo with some um, changes to the code. Uh, but before that, we'll just run through um, my application. I'll show you, I'll demonstrate what it looks like. Um, so right now I'm using a tech stack of uh, Python Flask um, along with MongoDB as the database server. And um, we're deploying it on AWS Beanstalk. And we're also using Docker to containerize and using AWS uh, 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 code deployment so that we can routinely do uh, code testing. So in here, it's I got a huge head start. Um, I kind of almost deployed the application almost to the point of there. Um, it's already got a server, web uh, server. Uh, I've already deployed it on a website, so um, I'll just show you and demonstrate to you um, the user interface first, and then explain a little bit of the CSH uh, designs, and talk a little bit more about the quality attributes of my project. So we'll just run through this file. Um, we're going through a de development server. Unfortunately, Google API is not going to be working. Um, so this will, I'll, I'll show you the real website. Um, so I'm using a 4K monitor, so it's everything's all scaled down. But um, here's the website. Um, very user friendly. Um, right off the bat, um, this goes through uh, the first feature of the CSA, CSH, where we're the design uh, that we're trying to build or that the design that I'm trying to build is um, creating an accurate and up-to-date information about weather conditions. So the benefits of using this existing feature of um, of building a weather application and then the new feature which is uh, to provide blogs of expert tips and insights. Um, I'm planning on using a uh, Twitter API for this, but in later on, but uh, right now I do not have that deployed yet. Um, but um, the UI is also another big factor. There's plenty of weather applications out there, but there are not that many that uh, have a very smooth and user in intuitive experience. So uh, navigating and accessing weather information um, and actually showing. Um, uh, the, the, the weather uh, sh showing a map of the location or change the background isn't really seen there. So that's kind of explaining the CH CSH1. So the first uh, benefit being I'm able to use um, old data or, or I'm using this uh, not from an API, but I'm web scraping this. So I'm gathering all the data from here um, and this kind of also ties in with the uh, quality attribute of reliability. Um, I want to test to see whether or not this data retrieved is um, accurate and with a maximum deviation of plus plus or minus ten percent. So we can double check that. Let's do Fahrenheit because we're in a, we're in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> so I'll type in San Francisco weather. Hey, that seems to me it's roughly around 10%. Um, and we can also see the humidity is 72%, which is roughly around te the 10% range, which is perfect, just what we want. Um, we have different uh, units of uh, measurements. Um, the, the weather scraping part is uh, kind of ties into CSH two, which explains the cost of using new and existing features. So new, use 
so the existing features being APIs and the new features being, okay, how can we cut down on costs of, of, of these developments? If we use existing features, we can use existing features such as temperature and humidity data, um, but we can create new features um, rather than using APIs. We can just do web, uh, web scraping, which will significantly reduce the cost of APIs um, because this is based off of search query. So if if this website was to gain a lot of uh, attraction, that would in turn cost uh, the company more money. Um, so let's go to CSH3, let people gather as much information as they want and no more than they want. Uh, so in here, we're allowing a customizable information display. We can allow users to choose what weather information they want to see, um, humidity, temperature, um, precipitation. I will eventually create a, a tab or a check mark icon to show to later remove some of these uh, low. Maybe they don't want to see AM or PM or temperature or humidity. Um, I'll include uh, wind speed as well, still in development stage, but uh, that is an option. And another thing is uh, creating blog-like features. Um, this is where if we go into the blogs, we can uh, you know, see uh, different users and what they post. Um, unfortunately, I haven't uh, set up any users with an image URL, but I do have, uh, we are able to generate posts in here. Um, uh, right now, I don't have the environment variable set, so uh, let's actually use the web domain that I created, uh, weatherexpress.com. So uh, in here, we can see the user, and right now I am um, not logged in, but if I were to log in, let's try logging in. You can see the um, the navigation bar actually changed. I have a new post uh, button here, which can let me post different. Maybe I want to do a test. I want to post here. Hi. Then it will update and back to the blog. We can see that our post is up here, and the user information is in here, and I can. I can uh, update and delete these posts. You know, say I want to update or say I want to delete this post. You know what? I'll delete it. Um, so now it's um, removed from the MongoDB um, database. So now uh, that that uh, allows people to gather as much information as they want and no more than they want. They can edit and they can they have the customization for these blocks as well. So another thing, keeping familiar features. We are um, using a very similar user interface that most people are very familiar with. Hey, how do you create a blog? Oh, oh new post. This is how you post um, inside the blog. Um, if I want to log out, there is clearly an information that says I want to log out. Um, say, for example, I want to go back home. Uh, Whether express.com or home, both of them work. I think that is usually how most websites work. So, and you can, you clearly have prompts, enter city name, select units. Um, these clearly do have an indicator. And as you can see, uh, I have created a Google Maps API in here to display where the city location that they're looking at. So say for example, they have multiple uh, queries, maybe it's San Francisco, another country, right? So then they can see, oh, well, this location is not what I want to see. And they can immediately determine which uh, features are available. Um, so as we demonstrated before, um, for CSH4, keeping familiar features available, uh, or, or CSH5, making undo and redo and backtrack available. That's where we saw from here, if we were to click any of these buttons and you were the user that posted it, you would be able to update and delete. So we have that undo and redo backtracking available. We also do have uh, providing an explicit path. So introducing various forms such as logging in, registration. You know, I had a I had a login button. I had a register button. Um, every uh, we do have explicit paths for these 
tasks. Um, there is also like, for example, hey, how do I go back into sign in? Well, there is an icon for sign in. Oh, did I forget my password? Oh, well, then I can just reset my password through this email, which will generate a, a, a user token um, using bcrypt, and then it will allow the user to reset their password. Uh, another thing, uh, providing ways to an, another CSH seven provide ways to try out different approaches in the weather app. It's important to provide informative error messages when users encounter uh, errors or face challenges. For example, I am going to put a random jargon uh, in this password, but the database will recognize, hey, this is an invalid email address, so I will not send any reset form. So there are clear indicators of whether or not there are errors and uh, in and uh, the web app implements uh, confirmation features to make sure this does not uh, submit a form. Um, another thing, uh, CSH8, encourage tinkers to tinker mindfully. Um, as you can see in the web app, uh, the UI is very clean, um, very intuitive. There's not really much buttons floating around. The icons, once you hover over, you can immediately see a cursor element. And you can see that the um, icons do change uh, once you hover over them. So it's very user intuitive which icons are selectable and which are not. Um, this really provides uh, tinkers to really tinker mindfully. Um, so that kind of ties in to the other key quality attribute, which is usability. Um, the UI itself is very easy to use. Um, it's un as you can see, you can understand and navigate through this web, web app very easily. And it's really relevant to what the product goal aims to provide really use, uh, user-friendly and accessible tool. Lastly, performance. So this is another thing. I want to make sure that the performance of my application is running smoothly. So as you can see, I'm just going to select San Francisco Celsius and let's see what happens. Oh, shoot. Okay. Quick, very quick, within less than one second. That loaded, the API loaded actually faster than the weather scraping, but nevertheless, uh, that is Google's uh, trademark. But um, as you can see, it really loaded very smoothly. Um, which is a really good sign of uh, what what we want, as this can impact the tool's usability and user satisfaction. Um, and that's it for this video. I talked about briefly about all the eight CSH uh, designs. I've talked about uh, the quality attributes that I've implemented in this uh, product goal specifications: uh, reliability, usability, and performance. Um, Clearly, uh, I might be a head start, but um, nevertheless, uh, thank you so much for watching.